first step is planning, and this is done before the patient goes into the operating theatre. High quality CT scans of the spine are taken, and these are fed into a sophisticated software system, which really acts as the controlling part of the robot. This tells the robot what to do and where to go. The aim of this is to make sure the screws go into exactly the right place, into the strongest parts of the spinal bones, and to avoid critical structures such as nerves, the spinal cord, major blood vessels, and also the facet joints. This should reduce the risk of complications. This planning phase is critical as it sets the stage for a successful operation. The second step is to attach the robot to the patient. This is done while the patient's asleep at the start of the operation. This allows the computer to tell the robot exactly which position it needs to be in in relation to the patient's spine. This then allows the surgeon, with the assistance of the robot, to place the screws in exactly the right spot. The third step is to use the robot to guide the surgeon to exactly the right starting point. Then the surgeon can drill holes in the correct position and at the correct angle. But this is not an autopilot procedure. The surgeon needs to feel the texture and resistance at the end of the instruments to make sure that they don't go off course. Surgeons trained in complex spinal surgery and robotic spinal surgery are able to watch the instruments and watch the robot very closely to detect any potential problems and avoid these before they occur. Once the holes have been drilled in the spinal bones, fine wires, known as K-wires, are placed in them. These K-wires act as markers and x-rays are then done to make sure that they're in exactly the right position. The screws are then carefully drilled over the top of the K-wires into the spinal bones. The K-wires can then be removed, leaving the screws in their final position.